evening and welcome to your first video in chapter 15. Tonight we are going to look at how an acid or a base solution affects the concentration of the ions it produces and how that affects then the pH of the solution. Let's begin with a quick review of information we learned two videos ago. So we're going to focus back in kind of on Arrhenius's idea I guess a little bit on Bronsted Lowry uh, as we look at acids and bases. So we know that acids, when they are dissolved in water, will ionize. And when they ionize, they produce H3O plus or the hydronium ion in water. Bases, when they go through ionization, they're going to produce OH minus in water, and that's by stealing that hydrogen from water. We've seen how acids and bases ionize in water, but did you know that water itself also ionizes? When water ionizes, it looks like the following. You can see that water produces the hydronium ion and the hydroxide ion. Remember we talked about with Bronsted's idea that water is amphoteric. It can react as or act as both an acid or a base. Well we can see how in this ionization, well in this equation we also see how water can act as an acid by producing the hydronium or it can act as a base by producing hydroxide. So we're going to see the symbol X in brackets. Usually we're going to have an ion inside that symbol and it just means the molar ion concentration of whatever is in there. For these equations we are going to focus on the hydronium and the hydroxide ions. So the molar ion concentration of the hydronium ion in water through this ionization becomes 1 times 10 to the negative 7th molar we find that the hydroxide ion molar concentration is also 1 times 10 to the negative 7th molar. And that's because we're going to get both in equal quantity. When we look at these two numbers together, we get a constant. As we start working with math, we see we have lots of different constants. So our constant is going to be Kw. And this is the ionization constant of water. So Kw is found by taking the ion concentration of the hydronium and multiplying it by the ion concentration of hydroxide. If we plug in those two numbers, so 1 times 10 to the negative 7th and multiply it by 1 times 10 to the negative 7th, we see that our Kw comes out to be 1 times 10 to the negative 14. So this is a number you will definitely want to know. So one of those numbers that we ask you to memorize every once in a while. So the Kw for water ionization is 1 times 10 to the negative 14. So how can we look at this and then decide if an or if a solution is neutral, acidic, or basic? Well, in a neutral solution, such as our water, just plain water, we have the hydronium ion concentration equal to the hydroxide ion concentration. This is not going to be the same in an acidic solution. In an acidic solution, we have an acid that's also ionizing. So that's going to increase this hydronium ion concentration. So in an acidic solution, your hydronium ion concentration is going to be greater than your hydroxide ion concentration. And we're going to find that that concentration then is greater than 1 times 10 to the negative 7th. If we look then at a basic solution, this time our hydroxide ion concentration is going to be greater so our hydroxide ion concentration is going to be greater than 1 times 10 to the negative 7th. We can use that information then to actually determine 
what the ion concentration is of our hydroxide and our hydronium ions when we dissolve a compound in water. So the molarity of solution is going to be X, which is your molar ion concentration, times the number of hydrogen or hydroxides that are in the compound that you were adding to that water solution to make a solution. So for example, we have a 1 times 10 to the negative second molar NaOH solution. So how do we find out our hydroxide ion concentration? Well, we're going to look at how many hydroxides do we have. In this solution, we only have one. So we are going to take one times our molarity, because remember the molarity is equal to x, and then multiplied by the number of hydrogens. So our molarity is going to plug in for our x. So we're going to have 1 times 10 to the negative second. And this is in brackets. And we find that the hydroxide ion concentration is simply its molarity. 1 times 10 to the negative second molar. So this time I have a 1 times 10 to the negative eighth molar H3PO4 solution. So we're starting with an H, so this time I'm making an acidic solution. But I have three hydrogens. So that means through ionization, we know that we've produced the hydronium ion three different times. So that's why I said that you had to write all of those steps. You had to show each one for ionization. So we have three different ones. So what we're going to do is we're going to take three times our molarity. So again, putting your molarity in brackets, one times 10 to the negative eighth. Multiplying this out, we get three times 10 to the negative eighth molar concentration. Same will work then for a compound that has more than one hydroxide. So again, I have two hydroxides. So as I'm looking at my OH concentration, I'm going to take two times my molarity, which is one times 10 to the negative five. Multiply that out, and I get two times 10 to the negative five molar. Well, if we left it at that, uh, just looking at the solution and what the hydronium or hydroxide ion concentration was would be a little too easy. So I thought we'd bump it up a bit and now give you something else to do with it. So let's work with these numbers. So what I'm going to have you do is think back to a couple of, just a couple of minutes ago, so we, when we wrote this equation, so remember KW equation, we had our hydroxide ion concentration multiplied by our hydronium ion concentration, and we got this constant number that I said you needed to know. Well, we're going to use that equation because we often have a solution. And we don't always just want to know how many hydroxide ions we had or the concentration of hydronium ions we have. Plus, maybe we want to know the other, but the solution we made was basic or acidic. How could we determine that? So let's look at an example. We want to determine the hydronium and hydroxide ion concentration in a 1 times 10 to the negative fourth molar CaOH2, or calcium hydroxide, solution. So the first thing we look at is that calcium hydroxide is a base. And we know that because we have this OH. So the easiest thing to do is going to be finding that hydroxide ion concentration. Well, we see we have two hydroxides, so we have to make sure that we're multiplying by two. 
So we're going to start with our hydroxide ion concentration. So that equals 2 times 1 times 10 to the negative fourth molar, which equals 2 times 10 to the negative fourth molar. So that gives us our hydroxide ion concentration. So how do we find the hydronium ion concentration? Well, all we have to do is plug it into this equation and then divide. So I have my hydronium ion concentration, which I don't know. Now I'm going to multiply that by my hydroxide ion concentration, which is 2 times 10 to the negative 4. So that we got that number again from our hydroxide ion concentration. And that is going to equal 1 times 10 to the negative 14th m squared. So now I have everything in my equation except for my hydronium ion concentration. So I just need to divide. So when I divide, my hydronium ion concentration comes out to be 5 times 10 to the negative 11th molar. Now you often don't hear about ion concentrations when we're talking about acids and bases. You guys are more familiar with the idea of pH or that pH scale. When we say an acid has a pH of or a base has a pH of. So pH just indicates the hydronium ion concentration. It's just a smaller number instead of using 1 times 10 to the whatever. It's a smaller number that tells us how much of hydronium we have. How we get this number is through this equation. pH equals negative log of H3O plus concentration. So negative log, if any of you are familiar, depending on where you're at in math, you may have seen this log function. A lot of times you're doing it about this time of the year. Basically what this log function does is gets rid of our scientific notation. We get rid of that 1 times 10 to the negative whatever. And it's going to leave us with just that exponent that we had up here with the concentration. So if I can do that for pH, I could probably do that for pOH. Again, we often work in pH and not pOH, but we can think of pOH as just then being the negative log of the hydroxide ion concentration. In neutral solutions, remember our hydroxide ion concentration is 1 times 10 to the negative 7th. So we plug this into the equation and you can see how this log kind of negates all of this information and we have negative of a negative 7 so we get a positive pH number. Same would go then for the pOH. So how are pH and pOH related? Well pH plus pOH equals 14. If we had an acidic solution our pH is going to be less than 7. So numbers from 0 up to, you know, just under 7 are going to be considered acidic. Basic solutions, on the other hand, have pHs that are greater than 7. So let's do some calculations that involve pH and pOH. For example, what is the pH of a 3.4 times 10 to the negative 2 molar strontium hydroxide solution? Well, the first thing we should notice is that strontium hydroxide is a base because we've got this OH. So let's start with finding the hydroxide ion concentration. Well, I do notice that I have two of them, so that means I'm going to take two times the molarity, which is 3.4 times 10 to the negative 2. My answer then is 0 0.068 molar. Or if you want to keep it in scientific notation, we have 
times 10 to the negative 2 molar, just because that's how you often see this information. So now I can plug this in to my pH equation and solve for pOH. So I can get a pOH, which is the negative log of 6.8 times 10 to the negative 2. Could you put in 0 0.068? Of course you could. And that gives me a pOH of 1.17 as my pOH. So now I can just plug that into the equation uh, knowing that pH plus pOH equals 14. So plugging in x plus 1.17 equals 14. So x equals 12.83, which is then my pH. Remember in the beginning I said if the solution is going to be basic, it's going to have a pH greater than 7. And we can see it does. 12 is definitely greater than 7. Now, could you have done this equation and found the hydroxide ion concentration and changed it first using the KW equation? Of course you could. So you could plug this information into the KW equation and then done the negative log of the pH. You can do it either way and you're going to come up with the same answer. So now what if you were just given the pH? So you're told you have a solution that is a pH of 3. How could you use that information and go backwards and find then the hydroxide or the hydronium ion concentration? Well, you basically have to do the opposite of a log function. And to do that, you have 10 to the negative pH for hydronium and 10 to the negative pOH for hydroxide. Looking at an example then, if we want to determine the hydronium ion concentration of an aqueous solution that has a pH of 4.0. All I need to do then is plug in to this equation. So I'm going to take 10 to the negative 4 to get my hydronium ion concentration. So we usually don't see it like just 10 to the negative 4, but we will see it as 1 times 10 to the negative 4 molar. So again, just putting it back into that form that we often see it in. Have these numbers changed? No, because I'm multiplying by 1. It's just the same number. So this is how we work backwards. So let's do a problem that's just a little bit more difficult. Let's determine the hydroxide ion concentration of an aqueous solution that has a pH of 7.52. Well now we can see we have hydroxide but we have hydrogen. So these two do not go together. I can't just plug into that equation. So we're going to work through some other equations. So if I have pH, I may, might as well find my hydronium ion concentration because that is going to equal 10 to the negative 7.52. This time we're actually going to put that into our calculator because when we work in scientific notation, we don't work with decimals as an exponent because how do you move it 0.7 or 0.52 places? We can't. So we're going to plug it into our calculator. We're going to use our little caret button. When you do that, you see you get a nice big number. So we have 3 times 10 to the negative 8. And that, of course, is our molar ion concentration. So we have capital M. So now I can plug this into my KW equation and take 1 times 10 
to the negative 14 equals 3 times 10 to the negative 8 for the hydronium times OH negative. Doing my math and dividing, I get OH negative equals 3.33 times 10 to the negative 7th molar for the hydroxide ion concentration. Now again, can I use pH plus pOH? Of course, I could change to pH first and then do 10 to the negative pH. You can see there's two different ways you can do this and either way is going to get you roughly the same answer. Your decimals may be off just a few, but you're roughly going to get the same answer. So after watching this whole video, and there's a lot to soak in, what equations have we looked at? Well, first we have the top equation. This is, remember, your KW equation, because 1 times 10 to the negative 14 equals your KW. Then we have pH equals negative log of hydronium ion concentration. And of course, the same would work for the pOH. We have pH plus pOH equals 14. And you see that this 14 and this 14 are the same. And that's if you put this into this equation, you get 14. And then we have 10 to the negative pH gives us our hydronium ion concentration.